For this build, we're going to be starting with a seasoned log of Pacific U. I've had this one in my barn rafters for several years. Here I'm using a skill saw to run a kerf up this log so it's easier to split the staves out. This log has been seasoned for quite some time and it's fully dry. But I have other videos on the YouTube channel that'll show you how to make a bow from a green live standing tree in just a day. Now that we've got a nice stave split out, I'll go ahead and remove the bark before laying out the bow. This bow is going to be 64 inches, which is pretty standard for my draw length of 29 inches. We'll go ahead and cut off the excess. I'm going to use a string and a pencil to mark the center line on this stave. You could also pop a line with a chalk line, but that can leave colored chalk on the back of the bow, which can stain it. I'll use a straight edge to connect those lines. For Pacific U, I like a nice sharp draw knife. For those curious about this bow building bench, you can get something very similar at stavemaster.com. The wonderful thing about Pacific U is the sapwood is very strong in tension, while the heartwood is very strong in compression. This particular stave has very thick sapwood, and I want to thin that out so that it doesn't overpower and crush the belly wood. We're going to thin it out to about one eighth of an inch, being very careful to leave a uniform thickness across the back. With you, you don't have to follow a growth ring like you do with other species. Now I'm going to use a chalk line to pop a straight line on the edge of this stave. And then I'll use my draw knife to remove all the wood outside that line so that I end up with a stave with parallel edges. Here I'm laying out the handle section. The middle of this bow is going to be at 32 inches. I go up 2 inches, down 2 inches for a 4 inch handle. Laying out the tips every 2 inches. Using the calipers, I start at 10 millimeters and just add three millimeters for every two inches until I reach the full width of the stave. In the handle section, I'm going about one and a quarter inches wide 
for the four inch handle and then I'll flare out to the full width of the limbs and the fade areas. All of these instructions can be found in detail in my book, The Traditional Bowyer's Handbook, which you can get from my website, Three Rivers, or Amazon. Here I'm taking all the wood off outside of those lines on the tips. I like to do the front to back profile first and then remove excess wood from the belly of the bow. A rasp comes in handy to refine those lines and get right down to them. You can see here that the grain wants to tear out a little bit and dive down into the limb. Be very careful if you run into that type of situation so that you don't remove wood on the inside of where your limb is going to be. Again, use your rasp to cut right down to the lines and be very accurate. We'll go ahead and draw the fades on here. I like to use an old worn out chop saw blade. It gives a nice radius to draw the fades. Now that we've got the front to back profile, we'll go ahead and start removing wood from the belly. card scraper comes in very handy to smooth things out and for final tillering later in the process. Once I start to get fairly close to the finished limb thickness, I'll use a compass and a pencil to draw a preliminary line for limb thickness. This will help you keep an even thickness from side to side and from the top and bottom limb. I'll go ahead and redraw my fades that came off as we were shaping the handle up. and continue to refine, moving down closer to the lines that we drew. At this point, my line is about a half an inch. Our finished limb thickness is gonna be much less than that, but this is gonna give us a good place to start. Be as accurate as you can, following this line as perfectly as possible.
Again, the rasp comes in very handy to get your wood right down to the line. The more closely that you can follow this line, the better position you're going to be in when we start the tillering process. Once we remove the bulk of the wood, the stay will start to bend a little. It's starting to look like a bow. At this point, I'm going to thin out the sap wood just a little bit more. I don't want the sap wood to be any more than about one third the thickness of this limb. Now I'm just going to take my rasp and round off all the sharp edges. Now we'll go ahead and shape up the limb tips. and shape the knocks. Sharpening the card scrapers isn't hard. I use a knife sharpening steel. You can get these card scrapers from Three Rivers Archery. A sharp scraper should take off nice long curls. Now it's time to put this thing on the tiller and tree and see what it looks like. During the tillering process, I don't want to exceed the final draw weight of this bow, which is going to be about 60 pounds at 28 inches. And so keeping an eye on it with the bow scale is very important. Now that the bow's bending a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and put the reflex or recurve in the tips. I have another video showing how to make this recurve form. The easiest way that I've found to do this by yourself is to hang a weight from the bow, which applies a constant pressure. As the wood soaks up heat from the heat gun and plasticizes, the weight pulls the bow down and fits it to the form.
If you have any places where the bow does not follow the form, just throw a clamp on there and smash it down. Put a little extra heat on it just to make sure it took. Now for the other side. Now you'll notice that this limb tip that's closest to us is a little bit twisted. We're going to address that next. So you'll notice that this limb tip is leaned over to the left. To fix this, I'm just going to apply a twist to it and heat the limb until it straightens out. This technique works great and I've removed as much as 90 degrees of twist in an Osage recurve. Adding reflex can add a lot of weight to a bow, and so we're going to have to remove wood to bring the weight back down. Removing wood so that the bow bends evenly from side to side and on a nice smooth arc is the process of tillering and this is the art of bow making. We'll go ahead and cut the knocks in to receive a string. To cut the initial knot grooves, a tile saw works great. To finish off the knot grooves, a red hot 12 penny nail works fantastic. I've never seen this technique before, but thought it would work so I gave it a try and was pleasantly surprised. It leaves a nice smooth groove and it looks great. Let's go ahead and string this thing up and see what we've got. I set the brace height very low to start with. Again, the final weight of this bow is planned to be 60 pounds, and so I don't want to go over more than about 65 during this process. Anywhere that there's a weak spot, mark so that you don't take off any more wood.
Remove wood from the stiff spots and skip over the weak. That is the essence of tillering. We're gonna go ahead and put this bow on a back set form and heat the belly for about 10 minutes each just to put a little bit of back set and drive any excess moisture out of this stave. After the bow cools, I take it out of the form and continue on with the process. This, this limb's bending a little bit more than this one. We'll just take a little wood off of this side to even it out. like both limbs are even but I'm still getting too much bend right here so now I'm going to take out wood here and then this whole limb again we're going to remove wood from the stiff limb and the stiff areas to even things out and to have a nice smooth arc over the entire bow that's looking better but we've still got some work to do especially on that right limb the outer two-thirds A few scrapes with a pocket knife ought to round that out nicely. That's looking better. The weight feels good, and it's got a nice, smooth draw. This is really shaping up. We'll go ahead and cut an arrow shelf in. This is an optional step, but I like to do it. Here I'm going to use a Nicholson number 49 half round rasp to shape up my handle. Again, you can get these at Three Rivers. Now to finish it off. I start with about 100 grit and work my way on down through 220 before moving to steel wool. Burnishing with a coffee mug or a glass jar compresses the outer fibers and really makes this bow shine. Now we'll go ahead and put the serving on. I have other videos here on the YouTube channel that'll show you exactly how to do this.
And finally, the string knock. I'll use a bow square to put the knock in the right position. One final check of the tiller and the draw weight and we're good to go. These are my elk hunting arrows, and I like them heavy. Overall, this turned out to be a fantastic bow. It's got a smooth draw, virtually no hand shock, and it'll really sling an arrow. If you've ever thought about building your bow, there's no better time than right now. Just jump in. Don't be afraid to make mistakes because that's how we learn. We'll see y'all on the next one.